Hello and welcome to your daily dose of commentary. Today we start with the topic, EA ruins an indie game's launch. But we have many other topics, such as a Super Mario 64 speedrunning myth that got debunks. I've been banned on TikTok again for a surprisingly stupid reason, and I might be getting a cat. So many interesting stories, let's jump into it. So this was a little bit of a sad story that turned very good. Rennie Gittens, the creator of the game Potions, A Curious Tale, wrote here on Twitter. My indie game I worked on for 10 years was immediately bumped off of new and trending by EA spam releasing 11 titles at once. All of the built up marketing and momentum squashed in an instant. As you can see here, what is this, like a bunch of EA expansions or whatever, like a lot of them all just for the same game. And so it got pushed down here and you can see it's faded off here. When I saw this, it had like 200 likes or something. And so I was like, if you are looking for a game to play, check out this one. Person seems to have been robbed of a bit of exposure by Twist of Fate. And so I got like 1.5k likes on this and then like 65,000 views. That's, that's some good exposure. But the original post blew up, getting 2.2 million views and 38,000 likes. I do wonder how much this actually translated into actual sales. Still has 49 positive reviews, but I think how long does it take for reviews to actually go forth or whatever? Regardless, I'm sure that level of exposure was better than whatever they were going to get on this thing which is nice. It's got a lot of positive reviews as well. Doesn't look like my kind of game, but looks like one of those kind of chill games. Got puzzles and combat and stuff. Looks like a passion project. Cute. I get it. So you craft different potions and they act as your spells. I eat you. Potions, a curious tale. That looks intriguing to you. Feel free to play it. I guess it'd be worth like what? 15 USD or something. I wish I was that passionate about something to dedicate myself to something for 10 years. It's got nothing but positive reviews, so it doesn't seem like it'd be wasting your time. And I guess that goes to show though, like people hate when a big entity like punches down on an underdog or whatever, right? On a smaller one. EA, be mean this random person on the internet. Screw EA. Even if like obviously EA didn't do that intentionally, but. Hideo Kojima really likes Hideo Kojima's work. So this was a funny tweet by Hideo Kojima. I've recently registered in Disney Plus. Here are my recommendations. And so he's uh, linked these and like he's linking his own stuff is the meme basically. I found this new website guys, it's pretty good. Here is uh, <laughs> my stuff. Let's sit down here, bro is recommending himself. And so I did kind of the same thing. I quote tweeted him and said, I have recently started watching YouTube. Here are my recommendations. My Michael Law video, Trevor Law video, and Franklin Law video. All three videos did very well. Franklin one is uh, creeping up to a million, but the other two have already crossed it. Whip down here said, never realized how good these thumbnails are. They are really good. My idea, Mims execution. Elon Musk makes awful change to Twitter. So this was a very weird development on Twitter. Elon Musk confirms Twitter is removing likes and retweets from appearing on the feed. Just view counts will be shown unless you tap into the post. So if you go to home here, so yeah, it says down here, like all the engagement and stuff. Uh, they wanted to make it so you can't see the level of engagement you have to click in. They're just really dumb. He doesn't want to be ratioed anymore. Yeah, it's very hard to think of like a functional reason why you would make this change. This person speculates. Interesting, because if you get curious, you're going to press to check, which means more engagement. People's curiosity always gets the better of them. And you're more likely to want to check posts of high quality. Interesting. I guess we'll just have to see. As Culture Crave here says, posts will get less engagement, not more. More often people will scroll by, seeing something with a ton of engagement and that draws people in, which is true. If everything is represented as having the same level of engagement, then nothing is special. Nothing is worthy of additional consideration. If anything, it may make people's experience on the platform less efficient in that you, if you want to get the same information you had before, you have to be clicking in to every single post over and over again, which would just add frustration for the user. One reason why he may want to do this is because 
Have you guys seen tweets that use read more, where you type more than the 240 characters or whatever? Those tweets traditionally get less engagement than tweets that just have 140 characters. Because people can't be fucks clicking in. They, don't, they can't be fucks clicking in to press read more or whatever. It's an additional, it's additional effort required to, to be able to read the tweet or whatever. And I guess if you get people more used to clicking into tweets to read them, wouldn't it just mean there's more views per like, if that makes sense? I mean, a view on the platform is effectively useless in that it's just your, your score by this is one view right now. I guess, yeah, maybe that's one, one thing that he could be doing it for. Like, it would be boosting the amount of views because I'm, I'm, I'm now viewing this twice. But people would scroll less. In the time it takes me to scroll, say, over seven things, rather than seven views, it's getting two. Like, again, this this isn't real engagement. These aren't real views, views and shit. Just, just scrolling past stuff. Like, what, what I'm saying is when we think about possible reasons why he's doing this, we can only think of potentially manipulative or negative ones. There seems to be no benefit to this from the user experience. In the same way that he hid quote tweets or whatever, like you have to click in, click here, click view quotes. He seemed to do that because he would often get quote tweeted and dogpiled on. So like, well, we're gonna hide all the quote tweets, like the child that he is. So what I'm saying is I don't agree with this change, obviously, and it seems kind of dumb. So this is what it's meant to look like. A Twitter employee previewed the potential timeline after hiding likes, reposts, and reply count. Looking at this now, where they're not visible, I just realized this should mean less likes and less retweets in general. Because if I want to retweet this, uh, so like if I'm on the main page here, if I want to like this, I can just do it right now. I can retweet it instantly. But with this change, I'll have to click in to be able to do that. One additional barrier to entry will mean a reduction in people doing that thing. People have to have more of a reason to want to do it. They will have to disrupt their scrolling experience to like something. This just seems to be like a bad thing. This Mario 64 speedrunning myth has been debunked. So under normal circumstances, I wouldn't cover this because I have nothing really to say on it. But in the video, the creator says that this myth not being debunked more widely is annoying to some people. So I'm gonna boost the message a bit and talk about it. So Lunatic J released a video titled The Biggest Myth in Speedrunning History. Highly recommend watching it. It is uh, blowing up. It's on trending. It's got 366,000 views right now. Um, one of his best performing videos in, in quite a while, I think. Oh, actually, his last one, it did very well as well. Awesome. I'm happy to see he's had a, some videos pop off then because he, uh, he makes some good content, uh, Lunatic. You may have heard that there was a glitch that happened in Super Mario 64 a long time ago where Mario, like, up warped and a pervasive myth is that Cosmic Rays caused a flip of a bit that caused this glitch to happen. Now, I had heard of the glitch happening, and I had heard that that was the leading theory as to why it happened, but it turns out that is not the case. That is just a myth. No one with any credibility has ever really believed the Cosmic Rays theory, and this video covers how the myth spread and what are the more likely leading theories and stuff. And so if you were under the impression that that is true, that Cosmic Rays flipped a bit in Super Mario 64 and caused a particular glitch, please watch this video. Actually, even if you didn't think that before, watch this video. I have been educated by this video and I, I think it's a good video and you should watch it too. The Dark Viper AU Twitter joke roundup. Can I just do a small section where it's just like, here is Dark Viper AU's current shitty Twitter jokes. I have decided to start collabing more with Dark Viper AU. I really enjoy his sense of humor and other positive qualities. A match made in heaven. Due to the growing amount of AI content, I would like to affirm that I am very likely human and will continue to be for at least the next week or so. I will continue to monitor my humanity for any changes. Beep. Get it? Because I say boop, but a machine says beep. Fuck, I am funny. Hilarious. My first grade teacher once asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. I answered, a person with 239,000 followers on Twitter. I achieved that today. I hope I have inspired you. Always follow your dreams. I, it's inspirational. Apparently, I am a meme as well on, on TikTok right now. Me looking at sign in the corner of my room that says, read this to reduce quality. <laughs> the initial quality is so bad. It's barely a change. Weird. And so those are my current shitty jokes on Twitter. I've been banned on TikTok again. So I got some terrible, terrible news chat. Sit down. It's going to destroy you emotionally, as it did me. I got banned on TikTok for playing three hands of poker in Red Dead Redemption 2. 
What a joke of a platform. It is not only fake money, it is 1899 money. We were playing for literal cents. I don't know what to say to this. I understand not wanting gambling on your platform. Sure, fine. But this, that's not really what that is, is it? Are any games of chance? Like, if, if I make a gamble in a game where I, I, I'll go left or right and there's a chance that I succeed or not, is, the, is that bans? I mean, Red Dead 2 is allowed on the platform. <laughs> the, the game specifically requires gambling for you to beat the game. I just feel so dumb. But you know what, actually, I, I, on second thought thinking about this, uh, honestly, three hands of poker in Red Dead Redemption 2, that's basically like a, a federal offense, a, a, a true felony. They, I'm lucky they didn't remove my hands and throw me into the desert. Like, I, I thank you, TikTok, for their benevolence in not literally murdering me for this terrible, terrible heinous act. So yeah, I'm going to be off TikTok for a while, apparently until March 10th, a couple of days. Woo. I don't know how many times they can warn me for this stuff, though. Sugar is curing me? So very recently, chat, I've been feeling a lot better. I've been sleeping better, I've had more energy, and for, for a while I couldn't figure out why, until I realized that the reason seems to be that I'm consuming a lot more sugar. I had like a bunch of these pixie sticks like every day, sherbet as we call it in this country, and I felt a lot better. I can actually get stuff done, I can get up in the morning, and the question is whether it's just the effect of sugar, like the normal effect where it gives you energy and stuff, or if the sugar is meeting some lacking in my body or something, and so people in chat suggest that I might have diabetes or something, which is not particularly something that I want. So I've recently gone to the doctors and I've done some blood tests. I'm going to find out, hopefully within a couple of days, if I have diabetes. If not, I will continue to consume the fuck out of sugar because it's making me able to actually do stuff in my life again, which is sick. I've gone back to normal Coke in glass bottles too. If I can zoom in on that. You don't need to see my face, machine. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. No more Pepsi Max. Hardcore sugar. To offset that I'm clearly going to put on more weight because I'm not drinking uh, sugar-free soft drink now. I'm going to be buying myself this really insane AI-powered exercise bike. <laughs> it's magnetic, looks very cool. I have to get it from like the UK or something. And when, when I get that, I'll review it, I guess, probably. We'll see how that goes. I'll tell you more about it when I get it. But basically, stuff's changing. Hopefully, I'm going to get more done now, which is going to be great. Do I have a history of diabetes in my family? Not that I'm aware of, no. I know of no one in my family who has diabetes. High cholesterol is another matter, but Matt, just go to the gym. It helps mentally, not just physically. People have different wants, different needs, different things that make them comfortable, different things that make them happy. There is never a social situation that I go into that I don't feel a little bit awkward. And going to the gym has always felt garbage to me. I've said before, I used to go to the gym all the fucking time, like every second day for years. And you know the times I would go? Like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. My sleeping pattern would allow for that, and I would do it because I liked doing a bit of cardio, lifting weights and stuff, when there was no one there. For a lot of my life, I would go to bed at like 6 a.m. every day, and that would enable me to like drive to McDonald's at like 2 a.m. Windows down in my shitbox car, just blaring Avenged Sevenfold or, or some uh, garbage music. This is, is 10 plus years ago, whatever. And that was life. Completely empty roads, blaring music, completely empty gym, doing whatever I wanted. Not many people had the luxury to do that kind of stuff, but I did. I'm not a person who enjoys the gym atmosphere, you know? Buying this cat will cost me $4,000. So someone tweeted this cat at me. Mr. Dark Viper, what is your opinion on this elegant fella? It looks very cute. And I said, my opinion is that I need to get a cat as distinguished as this one. One day I will. And as I've mentioned before, I've been trying to get this breed of hypoallergenic cat. And I'm on like a, a waiting list for it, and so they'll send me emails when they have litters available and stuff. Super expensive, like thousands of dollars, but I, I'm slightly allergic to cats, so I can't just get a normal cat from like a shelter or something. And it inspired me to look up when the most recent email I received um, had come through, and it was a week ago. So I emailed the person who s sells these cats. I said, I'm going to try and buy this cat. It is just like me, for real. Like, see, it's like a li little bit of brown, but very white and blue eyes. It's like me, for real. It's very cute. Will I succeed? I don't know. There is someone else who wants this cat as well. They were on the list higher than me. They were emailed first. So if they say no, I'll buy this cat. Eighth place. Oh, I, I don't know if these awards are for this cat specifically. Cat and kitten of the year. So the people who sell these cats do cat shows and stuff. They're very in-demand breeders and, and they have the cats. They have a pampered and well cared for and all this jazz. They're like super professionals in the cat trade or whatever. Like, it's not one of those, do they have cat farms? 
I've heard horror tales of like like dog mills and stuff where they just breed massive amounts of dogs, sell them. If they don't sell them, they get killed or something. These cats are by professional breeders and they're they're very, very highly in demand. There is always more of people on that wait list than there are cats available. Why I often don't collab with other content creators. Do content creators interact with other creators' communities? This question is too broad. Like, there are creators who work intentionally together to build communities for mutual benefit. There are groups of creators, and I think VTube is probably are the biggest example of that. Sometimes they can even be like companies that have a bunch of creators underneath one umbrella and they all specifically work to plan out collaborations so they can mutually grow and whatnot. And this is a good strategy in content creation. Two people who vibe really well create a lot of avenues for um, cross promotion and and cross growth and stuff. It is fairly stupid that me and TG don't do more stuff like this. And he has expressed his desire to do more stuff like this. But for me, my health, and my inconsistent sleeping and stuff have been a huge barrier to this. Like if every fucking Friday, me and TGG could just grab a new game and just chill and play it, I think we'd both be better off for that. Although to be fair, we haven't done that that much. Maybe we wouldn't vibe as well as we do in the limited capacity that we hang out. I'm not sure, but it'd be something that we should probably be doing. I've talked to him before about how I want to do um, another GTA Guesser thing. And there's even a new mode out for it. I'm just inconsistently healthy and inconsistently awake. So it's really hard to do. And especially because for some creators, they need other creators to be entertaining. They need someone to bounce off of. Their content is focused around other people. For example, Call Me Carson. When he got into a lot of controversy and his friends disowned him and stuff, his content was effectively impossible for him to really do well because all his content before was him and his friends joking around and doing stuff. And when he lost them, he was far less funny. I don't need to do collaborations to be successful. I don't need other people to be funny or to bounce ideas off. I mean, I do have you guys, of course, which is beneficial. It is clear gaining my success without collaborations that I don't need it. And so it's not something I work to do. But obviously other creators are different from me. I do think it's a sound strategy in this business. Will I claim a YouTube video for using clips from my channel? So I got mentioned in a video, the brutal lies of Hassan Abi, world's worst political streamer. I'll be real with you, didn't watch the entire thing. I've seen this kind of stuff many, many times. I only took notice of it because I was mentioned. They all looked up things to tell your enemy on Pinterest and ran with the same top five results. Real quick, I want to shout out Willie Mac Show, Dark Viper AU, and Kamal for providing me with more information than I can even think of for this yeasty beast. So their channel links along with my Instagram, you should definitely follow or your racist flesh-eating forklift licensed fascist will be down in the description below. So I think the only part of my anything that I made personally was included at the end. I mean, maybe some of these other clips from me, I'm not sure, but um, is, is, is this thing down here, like you you guys remember in my, it's actually a, a slightly modified version of the one I did for Asmongold, but talking about just the, the distribution of, um, well, the, how ag- content aggregation works. It's just a small clip, which obviously I have no problem with. What was interesting though, is down in the comments, there's this guy. Hi, nice video. However, at the end, you have Dark Viper's video playing. You did not get his consent. Reach out for permission or copyright will unfortunately have to happen. Thank you. To which the creator responds. Hey, nice comment. This clip follows the fair use policy since I credited the person directly before showing the clip, making it complete fair use. Thank you. I don't know if this person is a person like who likes me, who's trying to defend my work or something, or it's just a person who's disingenuous and and, and just trying to mock me in some way to suggest that I would have a problem with this. So I wanted to Put this in rambles to be clear, as I say here. Not only do you have every right to use clips of my stuff, I am perfectly okay with people using clips of my stuff. As long as a person isn't re-uploading my video, reaction or otherwise, couldn't care less. As I keep saying, my standards for what you have to do with my content for me to be okay with it is very, very low. It is specifically, do not re-upload it. And I consider reactions to just be re-uploads of my content in that you include the entire thing. How I would treat a person who reacted to a video on say Twitch, and then, you know, maybe only included like a third of my video in an edited version on YouTube. I don't, I don't know what I would do in that situation. Maybe I wouldn't touch that either, even if I wouldn't be okay with how that footage was made. But in general, I am perfectly fine with clips. And so be aware of that. Stressing about my channel again. As I have been down, at least somewhat recently, looking at impressions and views and stuff, which happens from time to time. I remember this clip from Future Armor that perfectly communicates what it's like to be a YouTuber. You're a YouTuber who sees their impressions slash views dip for a month or two. Oh God, I'll never make it this time. This is the end. Anyway. 
my entire career has just been me watching my views go down a bit, my impressions go down a bit, and go, oh my god, the, the, this is the end, I'm gonna have to quit, retire, and then they just go back up, and I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> I've done like dozens upon dozens upon dozens of times. It's probably one of the most stressful, thi stressful things about this career, whether you think you're gonna get out of the hole this time. But right now I am in a bit of a slump, and the only thing that can really improve that is just buckling down, stop being so blue, and just fucking edit and stuff. But we'll see what happens. If you want to relieve my stress, simply hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching, and I wish you all the best.